I'm a United Reform Minister and for the last 20 years I've been a chaplain in the Royal Navy. <laughs> served in many places all over the world, from Afghanistan to submarines, and I'm now currently the chaplain to HMS Queen Elizabeth, the new aircraft carrier. This has a ship's company of some 722 people, and whether they are male or female, whether they're black or white, whether they are atheist, Christian or Muslim, I am their chaplain, I am their minister, and they fondly call me the Bish. Uh, the life of a chaplain is, is never routine. Uh, particularly on a warship. I, I will get up, um, have our breakfast, we will have morning prayer somewhere on the ship in public. Follow that I will then go and do what I call my rounds. I will walk around the ship and meet everybody. It all depends on what's going on on the ship. It might be some difficult questions for the command, it might be some firefighting, um, it might be dealing with people who are sick or injured from firefighting or from, from conflict. It's, it's a very varied life. The uniqueness of a chaplain is I can go anywhere. Uh, we have our rank in the Royal Navy is chaplain, so I can eat in the wardroom with the officers, I can eat in the senior, senior eights galley with the senior eights, and I eat in the junior eights galley with the junior eights. During that time, we get to talk, we get to uh, converse about their day, where they are, where their families are. Then more prayers, perhaps an evening service, uh, if it's, I have a midweek communion, um, Sunday worship, and then I do my evening rounds. I sort of go round and see the other people who may not have been on watch. Always do some physical exercise. It's great to, uh, to join with the lads and lasses um, doing some flight deck sports or some uh, circuit training. And then maybe some study and then hopefully into bed. I was actually in a swimming pool in Port Harcourt waiting for some friends to arrive in a rainstorm and wrestled with God, if you like, at that point. And that was the point I said, do you know what, this is where I'm being meant to be. My, my sense of calling is, is, is a progressive one. As I said, it's, it starts with looking after people as an officer in the Royal Navy. It developed into looking after the leprosy patients in Uzakali in Nigeria. Uh, and it was a very strong sense of, of ministering to people very much on the mission front. I think I'm very much mission orientated, which took me into the Navy. I'm not sure any minister really knows what they're going in for when they start training. I thoroughly enjoyed the studies at Oxford. I enjoyed uh, at Mansfield. I have some great friends there. While I was studying, the Navy appeared in my life again in the form of the uh, University Royal Naval Unit. I became a training officer in there. I enjoyed it. It paid. Um, I loved being at sea. And then an advert in the reform for naval chaplaincy happened. My wife and I looked at this and we said, what is happening here? I've been in the Navy. I'm training for a minister. I'm thinking about where my ministry is going. And here is, here is a clear example. I applied and the rest, they say, is history. I've now been in the Navy 20 years. There are many facets to a chaplain's life. Primarily, we're there to lead worship. We're there to help people on their own faith journey. Um, in the Royal Navy of whatever faith. I don't have to preach or teach in any other faith, but I'm there to enable people from all faiths to worship. The other side of helping is the pastoral side. It's being available for people. We don't often always have the answers, but being within the system and being quite high in the command chain, we can help them find the answers and we can use the tools around us to assist if we can't help them ourselves. I like the personal challenge of trying to understand the gospel in a, in, in a contemporary society and in a unique setting. Particularly in the Navy, it's about bringing, understanding the Bible in the context of a Navy, which can either be humanitarian aid or it can be outright conflict. Uh, and those questions do, do get asked. So being able to assist people in understanding their own morality in, in relation to the gospel is a great, great thrill. Uh, and it's a great challenge as well. I, I, it's questions I have to ask myself. The big issue for, for military person at the moment is we are so short-staffed. We've had military cutbacks. I joined the Navy in 1980. There were 78,000 people in the Navy. There are now 24,000 people in the Navy and we are doing more than we did in 1980. 
it is hard work for people and it is stretching their family life to the limit. Separation is, is massive. So what I would change would be to increase the numbers of people in the armed services to, to allow some more time at home for people. I think very carefully about the situation of separation. It is the hardest thing for any family to bear, to be away from your family for some considerable periods of time at the moment. Having said that, it is the most rewarding and wonderful career rewarding by the people you meet uh, and wonderful by the places you get to go. If you are thinking about it then get in touch with any of the chaplains in the Royal Navy, we do have recruiters uh, and we will take you through, we'll bring you in to look at chaplaincy for a weekend, to look at chaplaincy on a ship, to experience a little bit about what, what it's all about um, and then proceed down the, the recruiting route. <laughs>